Hello everybody, I've recently been asked by somebody how to mill this shape, he had some problems milling this face and all the slots, so instead of giving him some advice that I'm not sure of, I decided I will recreate this object in FreeCAD and then I will make the path to mill it on the CNC. So let's get started and recreate this wheel. Let's create a new document, go to the part design workbench, first of all let's create a body and of course a sketch on the XY plane and make a big circle. Looking at the drawing I'm assuming a total diameter of 220 millimeters with an inner diameter of 200 millimeters. So let's give it a diameter of 220 millimeters. Press enter, close the sketch, pad it, I'm assuming a 40 millimeters overall height. On this face I will select it, I will create another sketch. Let's create another circle, give it a diameter of 200 millimeters and close the sketch and make a pocket of 20 millimeters but that's too much because I want some material left in the middle so I will just make it 70 millimeters. This will leave me a center part of 6 millimeters. Now let's go on the other side, select the face, create a new sketch, make another circle also 200 millimeters diameter close the sketch make a pocket again 17 millimeters and now I have the base for the model that I want to create let's go back and look at it it has a connector here in the middle so I will select again this face create a new sketch on it make a circle assuming the center connector is with a diameter of 20 millimeters, click on close again and pad it back 17 millimeters to be level with the edge. I will do the same here, create a new sketch after selecting the face, make a circle, give it a radius a diameter actually of 20 millimeters, pad it for 17 and now I still have to make the cutouts in the middle of the wheel. So I will select the face, click on another sketch, click on the button to hide everything up to the sketch. As I can see here there are five repetitions of the same pattern, so let's make that pattern and repeat it First of all, I will select some external geometry, which is this circle, this circle, and now let's create two lines from the center tangent to the outer circle, the second line, make them construction geometry, and set an angle between them of 360 divided by 5, since there are 5 repetitions. This will give us uh, an angle of 72 degrees. Let's make this vertical by pressing V and now it is fully constrained. These lines will define one section of the wheel. So let's create four rectangles. And make the bottom line of them all, just select them all and press E to make them equal. I also need equal spacing between them, so I will make four horizontal lines, make sure they are horizontal. And one here. Select all these four lines, press equal to make sure they are equal. Now let's move them higher here to be level. Now let's place this point on this line, press the O button, this point on this line, this here, press O again, select this and the line, press O, this point and this line, O again, this point and this line, and repeat this for the last line. Now the spacing between the four rectangles will always be equal, of course I have to make this line's construction geometry. You can see if I move this line, all the four move together, if I make them smaller, all make uh, all become smaller together and I still need to make some lines here and convert the external the parts that are not inside our circle to make it external geometry so first let's add some let's add some points here on these lines so we can break them and use it to close the sketch here and now let's create lines between these points for each rectangle Now I can select all these lines that are outside of what I need to cut and make them construction geometry. I won't delete them because I need the equality and all the constraints that I've set. I need them to make sure I can modify the design later. And now select all these points. Hold the control key in case you click somewhere else by holding the control key. You won't lose the selection 
and this line just a lot of points and this line and i will click on this constraint point onto object all the points are now constrained onto this line and you can see the design updates i still need to do the same here for an arc and i will choose this tool center and then points select the center of the circle or the origin just click somewhere else make sure it's not point onto this line repeat the same for all the four rectangles so select the center in the center of our sketch make sure i have a point on the line constraint make another one for this rectangle sometimes you might have to zoom in or zoom out to have the constraints appear you can see here it doesn't appear if i zoom in it's much easier but my long lines still are in one piece so i need to go to the split edge tool make splits below these arcs and now i can just select two by two the points now i can box select them press the c key to make them coincident repeat this for all the rectangles we still need to place these arcs on the larger circle i will select one end of the arc select the circle press the point onto object constraint or the o key repeat the same for the second arc i don't need to make it for this end too because it will lead to a redundant constraint let me just show you it's a redundant constraint because since they have the same radius and this one is on the circle the second one will always be so remove the last constraint now let's do the same for the other two circles press o let's just select all these lines and make them construction geometry we don't need them to be visible in the sketch but we need them to be here so our drawing won't break and there's still something that i need to do i need to remove this constraint from here so i can raise this line this looks quite similar to the design let's just move them slightly to the left the spacing seems okay let me just take a look at the drawing maybe even closer a little of course if i had some dimensions i would have entered some constraints for dimensions between these two lines i select the point i select the line set a distance constraint let's say it is 14 millimeters you can see all the lines updated and let's assume i also have a distance between these two so select one of these distance lines they are horizontal so i can press the horizontal distance constraint and let's say they have a five millimeter constraint you can now see everything is fully constrained except the first line because you can see here i can move it up and down but i won't be dealing with that right now i will close the sketch and with this sketch i will make a pocket through all you can see the holes here and with this pocket selected i will go to the polar pattern tool enter five occurrences the angle should be 360 click on ok and i have something similar to the photo that i've received i believe the wall here is slightly thicker there's still a difference you can see here i have a straight line but here it is a circle so let's go back to the sketch and modify this line i will make it construction geometry i will select the arc tool click on the origin click on this point make sure the point on point constraint is active and here you can see i cannot go to the point because the arc has a certain radius so i will just leave it farther away from the line make sure i don't have any constraint or if i click here and have a constraint after creating the arc i will remove the constraint and then select the end of this line the end of the arc and press coincident constraint now all the sketch is fully determined and seems a lot like this design that i've received let's just go to the two pockets which are 17 millimeters let's make them 13 this one too also these two pads should be 13 instead of 17 millimeters and now it starts to look a lot like this probably the diameter isn't exactly the same but that's not the point of what i'm doing here if you look close you can see a lot of squares here that are the result of all the padding and pocketing i can select the polar pattern and go here to the data tab and i have refine i will set it to true and you can see now the all those lines the useless lines the useless faces have disappeared there is a, just a block of material so i need to mill 
this disc. I've tried several ways, including pockets, faces, 3D pocket, 3D faces. Well, actually, nothing works. So I had to go to a solution that I try to use as little as possible, but sometimes it's the only way to do things. I will hide the model, make the body visible, I'll go back to the part design workbench, create a new body. I will delete the job, there's nothing in it. Create a new sketch on the XY plane, of course. Click this button to make everything disappear up to the sketch. Create a circle, give it a radius of 200. Create another circle in the center, give it a radius of 20 for the connector in the middle. I will close this sketch and pad it just 0.01 millimeters. It doesn't really matter. Now I want it to be flush with this face. I want to use this body that I've created just as a tool to make the path. The easiest way, take the ruler, select the face, select this face and I have a 26.99 millimeters distance and just go to the body, placement, position, Z, 26.99. Now I will select both of these two bodies, go to the path workbench again, create the job, make sure they are both selected use the template to make everything faster, place the origin correctly, click OK. I will click on this face, make a pocket, a simple pocket, click on apply, but I will change the pattern to offset. Of course, a lot of up and down movement, but that can be solved by going to the operations, pocket shape, scroll down to keep tool down and make it true. Now there's very little up and down movement. After milling this operation on the CNC, what I need to do now, let's just hide the pocket shape, is to drill all these holes. For that, I would rather create a new job because in this job I have the second body that will interfere with a cutout. So I will select the first body, the one with the holes create a new job, select a template, you can now see how fast you can do everything using a template, reposition, the origin, click on OK. Now let's hide the model from the first job, show the one from the second, and I will rotate it to see it from the bottom, select this face and click on the profile operation. Let's rotate it again. Click on apply and you can see some pretty weird path because the cut side is set to inside. Change this to outside, click on apply and you can see it's almost as it should be. Just one problem, it goes here, here, here and tries to go around this ends of the piece. Go to the sketch that defines the cutouts. First of all, let's delete these constraints that define the radius of our arcs. One, two, three, and four. Now let's create another circle. Make it construction geometry and give it a radius very close to this one, which is 199.99 millimeters it should be as close as possible because it will be very difficult to select everything i will give it 190 it will be easy, easier to select now i will select this point again select the circle click on this constraint point onto object or press the o key do the same for all the four rectangles i can make everything smaller i can leave a little rim I will close the sketch so you can see what I'm talking about. Here is a little rim all around. If I look in this design, the rim is almost in existence. So I can go to the sketch, modify the radius of the circle to 199.99 millimeters. I will close the sketch again and you can see there's still a very, very small rim. If I zoom in, I can actually select this face and you can see the entire face is now selected. But the profile is messed up, of course, because creating that changed all the naming of the faces. It's the topological naming problem. So double click on the profile, go to base geometry, remove the geometry, select the face from the bottom. It's very important to select the face from the bottom. Click on it, rotate it back. You can see it goes through the outside, so we have to go to operation. Click on process holes, check it, uncheck process parameters and click on apply. Now 
all the milling for the holes is exactly as it should be well almost exactly i will select this top face go to depth click the arrow next to start depth click on apply and now everything is exactly as it should be so i have these two jobs the first one will mill the entire piece the entire part uh, on top of the piece which is a lot of extra material and then the second operation will move on and remove all the material in the slots of course it's a little hack i have a 0.01 millimeter here which on almost any machine won't even actually be visible in the end I will have to rotate the piece on the CNC and repeat the first job this shows you why it's actually a good thing to make two separate jobs besides the fact that I wouldn't have been able to mill the slots because there was a body interfering but now I can reuse the file from the first job and rotate the piece mill it again on this face and my part is ready well almost of course I have to make a profile on the outside but that's but just a simple thing to do i won't show it now thank you for watching i hope it is helpful and i hope it will solve the problem for the person that asked me this question